Hello, my Gemini friends. This is Kristen Redman, Astrological Intuitive, and today we are going to be going over the influences that are happening in the sky for you coming up in 2022. And you know what? I think it's going to be an interesting year in general where you're more focused on your health and well being and the balance between what's happening here and how it makes an impact on your health and what happens externally in your world. There was a lot that happened last year. Um, really, it started at the end of 2020 when we started going into the Sagittarius Gemini eclipses. And in the world of astrology, eclipses are like huge. You know, they happen in 10 year intervals. Um, they happen in different signs. And when they start to happen in your signs, that's when some big shift and change happens in your life. Okay. And so last, yeah, well, I say last year, well, it is till technically 2021 as I'm doing this right now. So last year at the end of 2020, that's when these Sagittarian Gemini eclipses started and they were really pushing for some new beginnings for you. And especially because you're Gemini and this, you are the sign of communication and friendship, massive things were happening in your life that were pushing your voice to the surface to be heard especially if it came into the area of friendships and having to let go of certain things and people, but definitely getting your voice to be heard. And I tell you what, I did a number of readings for Sagittarius and Gemini clients last year. And it was the same thing again and again, outdated situations that they found themselves in based off of old limiting belief systems and having to release them and let them go. And so now we're moving into the uh, Taurus Scorpio eclipses. And what that deals with is what we value, how much we think we're worthy of, and then on the Scorpio side is what needs to be released to make sure that we get what we deserve, okay? Where that's happening now for you this year, because we're moving on and we're moving forward is going to be in the 12th house of the subconscious mind and karmic debts and such. And then the sixth house of uh, the physical body and our health. I think last year brought a lot to the surface for you. And I think it was almost like brain overload. <laughs> um, I think it's the best way to say it, right? Like, I can't take this anymore. I don't deserve this. How am I going to communicate this, right? Maybe you were able to last year, but this is a year where it's definitely gonna come to the forefront. And it's also going to be about healing these things, right? Last year showed you what had to be cleared out, what had to be changed, what limiting beliefs um, and communications had to be done, right? And uh, this is a year about purging them, right? They came to the surface and they came to your conscious mind last year in ways that I think that they never really have. And so not only were you able to see them, now is a time when you're ready to start to release them. And because you're realizing that these outdated beliefs are directly impacting your health. There is no other sign that this is happening to than you right now. And I think it's because um, you have an ability to hold on to these things, right? These outdated beliefs, and it's the way it's supposed to be. This is the way it's always been. This is the way it was done in my family, year after year after year. And now 2021 came up and it was like, oh, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it worked then, but times they are a change in Bob Dylan and I don't think this works for me anymore. So let's think of an example. Let's say, let's use communication because you're a Gemini. Let's say growing up in your house, talking about your needs was not even an option as a child. It wasn't an option because your parents did not have that either because their parents did not extend that to them either. You're seen you are not heard, right? And so this gets imprinted one generation to the next, to the next. And then 2021 comes up 
and these eclipses happen and you're just like, mm, my needs matter. Okay, and I'm gonna communicate them because it matters. And that belief that I have to subjugate my needs or my voice, Gemini speaking, me having to hold that back isn't valid anymore, right? It's not even valid anymore. So this is a year where we start to change that. This can take on a million different things, right? We all have different weird beliefs and thoughts and, you know, and also ways of communicating, right? And that's why you've incarnated this lifetime as a Gemini. So your voice can be heard, right? And if your voice isn't heard, what do we do? We hold it back and then we start to have neck problems, throat problems, because our throat chakra of vocalizing and verbalizing ourselves, especially when we have a right to, if we hold it back, it's going to shut down that energy center and it's gonna create a number of issues as a result. Now, if it kept going and going and going to the point where it's literally gonna break, that's what this year is all about. It's gonna manifest in health issues for you, okay? Throat, think of that, could literally be esophagus, it could be your voice goes out, it could be neck issues, it could be, um, I'm trying to think of other things. That, uh, Gemini rules the hands as well too. It could very well be something that has to do with your dexterity. All of a sudden you can't pick things up, you're having problems. Um, there's a lot of things that can come. Sore throats, nonstop, um, a number of things, right? You get you get what I'm getting at. That's just energetic saying that it's time to let things go and to clear these things out. Now these eclipse dates where they're going to be very obvious, April 30th, May 16th, October 25th, November 8th. These are the eclipses this year pushing you to purge the outdated, to let in the new so that you can operate and be happy, right, in your daily life, because that's what the sixth house is about, is just being happy and healthy in your daily life. And it could be work, too. Um, this has to deal with work, and we'll talk about career here as well. This kind of ties into it. Sixth house is our daily work, so with these eclipses happening there, you may find that you've been holding back your voice long enough and you haven't been heard. Maybe you have vocalized and you haven't been heard and you haven't seen change. These eclipses are gonna push things out of the way and bring in something new that does work, right? Or remove the outdated things that we're keeping it. So it could be a boss retires or something and then you do get what you need. But these eclipse time frames, just pay attention within that time frame: April 30th, May 16th, October 25th, November 8th. Two weeks leading up to it is kind of when that gateway opens and it makes it really obvious. The universe will definitely show you in that time frame. Now, another thing, too, that lends to that communication is that your ruling planet Mercury this year is going to be retrograding in all of the air signs. Air signs deal with communication. So definitely a year of looking to the past with how you've communicated, how it hasn't really gotten you the results that you want, and how to change that moving forward, right, as well. So let's look at a couple other things though right now um, because we're talking about career and we're just gonna like go right into it. Jupiter takes 12 years to make its revolution around the sun where we take 365 days to make our year. One of our years, or um, yeah, 12 of our years is equivalent to one year in Jupiter. So when Jupiter moves into a sign or into a house, it makes a pretty big difference, right? And so for you, where this is happening, it started last year, is in your house of career and life purpose. Jupiter comes through, and I tell you what, it expands us. It sees where we've been stuck in comfort zones and it just doesn't work anymore. And it kind of pushes us outside of our boundaries and it brings new opportunities in that are more fitting for us. And for you, that's happening in the house of career. So not only are you having, don't mind my cat up in here, um, not only are you having these eclipses kind of, <laughs> clearing out, she's tickling my ear, clearing out energy in the house of your daily work. You've also got Jupiter trying to bring you lucky new opportunities in your house of career where it hasn't been for 12 years. So this is pretty positive. If you're ready to make a change, the universe is behind you to make that, to make that happen. Absolutely. In ways that it hasn't. Um, it's also going to be moving in just briefly from May 11th until um, October 30th this year as well 
Jupiter is going to be moving slightly into your 11th house, giving you a preview of what 2023 has in store. 11th house has to deal with the uh, organizations that we're involved with and the friends that we surround ourselves with. Hey, you get, get out of here. Just trying to get all crazy with my fake greenery. Uh, the organizations that we surround ourselves and our friends, right? And so I think you may find that um, especially if you're having communication breakdowns in these areas and you decide to let those things go, that Jupiter is going to come in and bring you people that are more fitting, groups that are more fitting, friends that are more fitting to who you are now to really help grow and expand you. So that way we're not kind of reliving this dynamic like I was talking about of the, the old beliefs that bring all these issues. You know, people that do hear you. People that do see you and hear you, that's what it wants to bring. But it's pretty awesome to have that happening in your in your 10th house right now. Um, let's think of this. Okay, so, uh, you know, I'm just happy that it's almost like you kind of get a break. You know, 6th house, 12th house, a lot of going in, a lot of introspection. You may find that last year was just enough <laughs> and you need to take a break, right? And I think that's okay. And really, those are the astrological events that are happening for you. What we're going to focus on now is where you can make those changes. And so where we do that is in the um, new moons and the full moons. Any month, I mean, they're all going to take on a different flavor based on whatever the you know um, astrological sign is that we're in. But you're going to be more focused on your new moon in Gemini to manifest new things. That's where you plant your seeds and for change that you want to see happen. And then at the full moon, that's where we see those seeds come to harvest, or that's where we see where seeds we've planted in the past for things we want to change, they've reached their fruition and it's time to harvest them. So it could be time to release some things. The universe always makes it known at a full moon, right? That's when emotions are high. That's when things happen. Emergency rooms are full, you know, because things have reached their apex and they got a break. It, the levee's got a break. Things that were hidden come to light at the full moon. So let's look at that. So your, hold on, I'm looking right now. So your Sagittarius full moon is going to be happening June 14th. Keep in mind, that's a super full moon, too. I, clearly, something pretty massive is going to be happening in that time frame. And because we're going to be coming right off of the heels of this eclipse cycle, too, that's going to make it obvious to you what has to be released in life to bring you greater happiness and better health. Um, a super new moon, I mean, uh, why they call it that is because the moon is actually closer to the Earth than normal, so it appears larger. That means emotions are going to be higher, events are going to be bigger, so much so that you can't avoid it, okay, or rationalize it away. Definitely a time frame to keep an eye out for. And then when you want to plant seeds for new beginnings, you can do it at any time, really, honestly, but it's going to be extra strong at these new moons. But your Gemini new moon, ee boo bop, is, you know what, I just told you something, I'm going to give you two moons, actually. So the new moon is going to be May 30th. That's going to be huge um, as well. So uh, plant those seeds for what you want to change, especially in terms of communication, right, to bring it up. Now that six-month mark for where that's at, when we actually go into the Gemini full moon, that's going to be December 7th. So whatever seeds that you plant at that time frame, May 30th, you can see shift and change actually happen by December 7th. So what I'm going to do now is um, pull a card, just kind of like a 2022 card for Gemini, you know, in general. And I'm going to call on Archangel Zadkiel. He is your Archangel as Gemini. He's the angel of learning, the angel of communication, the angel of thought. He helps us to remember things, to remember them accurately, especially if you're going back and you're digging into these old core beliefs old core wounds and you can't rightly recall what they are or the memories that brought them because you've blocked them out, you're going to call on that archangel of yours to help you remember things effectively and to communicate, right, to whoever needs uh, to hear your voice, right? So, 
just kind of have them pull a card, right? Just like an Outlook card, something to keep in mind. Let's see what we got. Three more times. I could pick it up. Aw, oh, deep knowing. I love this. In so many ways. Goodness gracious me, look at that. Look at that full moon that's on there. 43 too. Somebody's 43 out there or turning 43. Big year for you. But look at this. Okay, we've got a couple full moons. And isn't that funny that I accidentally said both of the full moons? I think these full moons are going to be exceptionally pivotal for you this year. The June 14th one and then the December 7th one. That's so You're the only sign I've accidentally said two full moons for. And here they are again. Things are reaching a culmination. And then you find in the middle here that we've got an owl. And they represent wisdom, right? Owls, as a totem animal, represent wisdom and knowledge. And being able to see things from all angles, right? They can turn their heads all over the place. And they can see things from all these different angles. And this card in general represents, you know these answers deep inside of yourself, right? You know when something's right and you know when something's wrong. And if you do have to release something in between these full moon cycles, then you're going to know it. And you're going to believe, you're going to know without a doubt. I mean, clearly, it's going to come through. And to trust what yourself is telling you, especially if you're digging up some old ancient stuff, you're going to know intuitively very much what the answers are deep inside of you. I mean, this is a huge... Oh, I didn't even tell you to this to the birthdays. I totally missed this. Look at me doing your reading all weird today. So this is just general birthday outlooks for Gemini in general, for the sign of Gemini in general. But if you want a reading that's more geared in towards your specific chart there's a link below just click on it um, it takes you to my store we can do a reading for you by phone zoom facetime whatever works so we can dial in specifically for your specific birth chart but um, in general if your birthday falls between may 21st and may 29th jupiter is going to be making a really amazing connection to your sun sign Remember, Jupiter is that planet that pushes us out of our comfort zone, so you're definitely going to be one that's exploring new boundaries and pushing the boundaries this year for sure, and that leads you to massive growth and expansion. If your birthday falls between June 1st and June 16th, Saturn is going to be making an amazing um, connection to your sign. And the number one thing that I hear in my head right now is the more boundaries that you can start to establish the better. doesn't matter how many years it's been. The more that you can um, put those things out and to know the limitations and to, to tell people, this is mine, this is yours to deal with, the better. Okay, And that could be part of that deep knowing as well too. The thing with Saturn is that it supports your long-term goals. And if you are putting some projection out into the future with how you want to change things for the better good moving forward and i hear something in my head now that is telling me especially if you're trying to break these outdated patterns that have gone from one generation to the next and this is for the longevity of your generations to come that the universe supports that by establishing new traditions new things let's say that people didn't hug in your family and you want to change that because you can see how that dramatically impacts how intimacy is given and received in your family. Maybe this is the year you start to change that and you make a rule that nobody comes and leaves without a hug in my house. You know, something like that. I don't know. But that's what Saturn does. You put new rules in place and amazing things come out of that hard work. You'll reap some amazing rewards for that. Um, if your birthday falls between June 10th and June 16th, Neptune's going to be squaring your sun. Uh, no better way to say this. This is going to be a bit of a confusing year. You're going to feel like you're in some fog because that's what Neptune does. And with you having a Gemini mind, you're very logical and in the present. And you've got the planet of intuition and knowing, that deep knowing that's squaring your sun. It is calling on you to trust your intuition over your logic. This situation I was talking about, these full moons are going to make it very, very, very obvious what needs to change for you. Um, 
push to go within and listen to that, right? Answers you seek are found within deep knowing. There's something. There's someone out there watching this one. Holy smokes. Ain't no psychic out there going to give you any better answers than what you got inside of yourself. Call on Archangel Zad Kiel. He'll help you find the answers, right? He'll help you find the clarity that you need. Know, Gemini, that this is a year of massive recalibration for you on a subconscious and a conscious level. Just communicate your needs, okay? That's a major thing. First thing is to get the clarity in yourself, all right? And I'm praying for you to find that in this year of 2022. And I send you wonderful blessings for a blessed and prosperous new year. Thank you.